nicely. Darren with a shallow line. Yeah, Troy doing exactly what he does every time. Liam Burke is absolutely blind. Nice wide line there, opening the door up for Cody Pollenberry, who comes up. Wow! Right on the inside there. Pukegoi Park Raceway is all set to go with round five of the Valvoline D1NZ New Zealand Drifting Championship proudly brought to you by Repco. What a day you are in for over the next five, six, seven, eight hours. However long it goes, you're in one of Australasia's fastest drifting corners and we cannot wait for that. Stephen Mackay of Accommodator Steve Daniels, two-time NZ Drifting Championship champion Cole Armstrong in the house as well. Got to say, drama from the get-go. Championship leader Andrew Redwood has popped the diff and he's changed up, gone out there already what does that mean today he's gone to a, a higher ratio so he doesn't have the legs in the car which is the wheel speed oh, the, at this track you need wheel speed big time because they're coming in at 180 k so that's going to hinder Andrew it's going to be hard for him to get that qualifying spot that he wants yeah, now he's only 10 points in front, so it makes a, an incredibly interesting, could be a game changer afternoon here at Pukekohe Park Raceway. Steve Daniels, we've talked about the shoot, shorter run up. Uh, you and I were watching the, the, the practice battles. It didn't seem too much difference. Well, a quarter of a mile is what the distance is between starting the track here and actually hitting that first sweeper here at Pukekohe. In the past, we've done it from 600 metres. We've done it from a kilometre away. But what we've seen with those days was the cars were actually getting off the throttle before getting back on. Now they're going to be sliding straight into it, into the sweeper. Look, the speeds may not be hitting 200, but they're going to be going pretty damn quick today. Kyle, you've got to say, this is all about attitude. But we've just heard of Maia, uh, Fangadan sitting third in the championship. More dramas, rocker issues. Yeah, apparently so. The guys uh, had a wee check this morning of the clearances and some of the rollers had seized, which is the part that moved the valves in the motor. Obviously, Fanger, let's send it. It'll be right. The boys, no, no, let's fix it. We want you to get that championship. So uh, they've shot away. They've just arrived back now, and I've got about 10 minutes to fix that motor. Most important, he's got to cross the finish line to qualify, right? That's, he's that got is to the start. key. He's, he's just got to roll over the start line. It's D1NZ <laughs> Drifting, anything can happen, and this is how it works. It's time for round five of the Valvoline D1NZ Drifting Championship Series for 2021. The penultimate round of the season brings us to Pukekohe Park Raceway, one of the fastest drifting circuits in the world, where the infamous Turn 1 Sweeper will once again test the drivers as they get set to battle it out at the spiritual home of drifting here in New Zealand. It's a standing start off the main straight. A chicane for the lead driver will push the car to use the left two-thirds of the track on approach into Turn 1. The chase car during the battles will be on that right hand side a full power acceleration into an initiation on the left hand side for scoring zone one. Firing through the sweeper, the judges will be looking for a smooth arc around to scoring zone 2. An outside clip on the right hand side of the track where the drivers need to make use of their lateral grip and brake control to modulate car speed through that first transition. Pushing off zone 2 into a left inner clip 3 through the S's. Judges will want to see a fast snappy switch onto full power to fill that left outer zone at clipping point 4. Fluidity will be important here, powering over to a right inner clip 5, which can be a little tricky at times, maintaining acceleration out to that finer outer clip 6 on the left hand side and across the finish line. One less clip through the S's this year, which will change up the scoring and make things a little easier for the drivers to keep that momentum through the second half of the drift section. Our judges this weekend will see Marco Hara back again overlooking the line with 35 points up for grabs. A former Drift South veteran and judge for the Drift South series, the grand final of the 2021 Drift South season getting underway at Ruapuna next weekend at Mike Perro Motorsport Park. Joel Counter is our angle judge once again with 35 points to dish out a former D1NZ pro driver and two-time Drift South champion behind the wheel of his V8 powered S14 Sylvia. 
and returning as our final judge for the weekend is Chris Howard, organiser of the New Zealand Drift Matsuri and for the first time ever the New Zealand Drift Matsuri will head to the South Island Mike Pedro Motorsport Park in Christchurch check out driftmatsuri.co.nz for event dates and all the details and that is your event preview as we build up to round 5 of the 2021 Valvoli D1NZ Drifting Championship Series It's just you can't beat it with the over 200k entry and walls both sides. It's like never gets old. Like it's always exciting. You come out of the end of the section and you, you know, you got like goosebumps. Gets the heart going like no other track. You're so fast. The cars have come a long, long way. Tires are a lot wider, a lot stickier. Years ago, we didn't even start where we started. We started like 100 meters more around the corner. Now we're just we're starting on the straights. We're going faster and faster. It's, you come out and you're shaking. No matter how long you've been driving, those first few laps are just like. Woo, I'm still here. I'm still alive. It's just unbelievable. You know the bumps. The pure speed, the walls that are there, you, you go half a half a metre offline, you're on the grass and that's your day over and done with. Just the fact that you've got to push the limit to be good there, but you go a little bit offline or you make any kind of little mistake and it'll bite you. Oh, it just separates the boys from the men. <laughs> Drift car racing is returning to Pukakoi. The D1NZ series had to find a new home after a local resident complained about smoke, but with resource consent they are now back and going sideways at 200 kilometres an hour. Some of the awesome battles of my career have been at Pukki. Around that sweeper, getting bumped by Mad Mike on the entry, or getting to the first switch and getting tapped in the door by Gaz Wider. Fanger Dan is a future champion in the makings. Uh, Pukko is, I hold quite dear to my heart. You know, it's where I first ever raced a Formula Ford and I've done a lot of circuit racing there, so it sort of, it feels like home going to Pukekohe and there's no better feeling than um, coming over the top of the hill, changing up and accelerating into that first corner. It's a special place for all the old dogs. There's not many of us left, so it'd be so good to get back there. It's like nothing else. Um, you just used to make sure you had the speedo off the clock, touching the Made in Japan sign, and just throw her in. Gaz Ryder in the Phoenix S14 laying it down in the chase right here is absolutely committed here. Grand final. I've won that twice the last two years in a row. I love that track. It's all about the sax hanging man and just going all out, eh? It's something I'll thrive on it's just to go as fast as we can and something that really shouldn't be probably going that fast and that sideways. Sort of is the home of D1 really, so it'd be good to go back. It'd be nice if it was dry. We've had a lot of wet, wet rounds there lately, but um, I guess it makes it the same for everyone. But it's just nice to go back there and hopefully we have a have a fantastic crowd and we um, crown a new champion. We didn't do too good last season uh, at Pukeko. We actually didn't qualify, which is the first time it's ever happened for me. Um, it was just a mixture of me, you know, not getting the car right, not getting myself right. So, yeah, look, Pukeko really owes me something. Uh, I got a bone to pick with it. It just didn't go right last season. I'm going to really, really take it hard this time. I'm excited, man. What really it comes down to, you know, is who's going to be the best driver. And, and uh, I think it always comes down to that if he beat me fair and square, he beat me fair and square. I can learn off him, he can learn off me, whatever. Yeah, yeah, we've had a couple of wins there and um, by far my favourite track in New Zealand and uh, yeah, hopefully we can uh, keep the car together and uh, do well again there this year and hopefully be in contention for that championship. Be huge 
big corner. Everyone just loves it. You know, it's great for the fans, it's great for the crowds, great for the teams, and it's just great to put on a good show for everybody. This is what it's about, man. We love to do this. This is why we uh, pour all our heart and soul into it, and uh, oh, what a show we would have just put on. Unreal. Well, it is the first battle of the top 16. It's the Animal Liam Burke wearing the 1NZ on his door going up against the Waikato Times. S14, the Berserker of George Myberg. Liam Burke will lead out. He qualified in second position. Let's see if he can put the power of the 2J down on this. Now his power is 14. Look at that. Looking nice as both of these cars stay together. George showing it up on the inside like you're allowed to do. Liam doing real nice, throwing a lot of angle, opening the door for George to come up on the inside. This is a good, clean battle so far. Liam Burke putting the power down, getting out to that outer zone, giving the, opening the door for George to come up. Doesn't quite have the drive to suck up on the inside there for that last pan head. Yeah, there's a disadvantage to start first because of the heat in the tyres? Well, no, not if you do a good warm-up, then you get your tyres nice and warm, um, and that'll be something. But yeah, definitely for the second run, everything is warm, and you can really put in a huge run, as you should see that these guys do, coming into this first corner at 180 plus kilometres. George throwing it up on the inside, shut the door a little bit there for Liam Burke, making it hard for him to come up on the inside. Liam doing pretty well with the scenario he's got. George pushing a bit wide there, on that comes inner clip. And yep, Burke diving up on the inside there for the last pan head in the clip there. But yeah, most of the time, or a D-beat of a tyre, you know, the, yeah, of course. the rumble strips are quite aggressive and the car can drop down and, and roll the tyre off um, the bead. Well, the rumble strips are the only, aren't the only things that are aggressive, so are the judging calls. Let's see what happens. Well, clean sweep. Liam Burke gets all through. Liam Burke's going through. The drivers right now will be, honestly, a very hesitant. They'll be taking off the line, feeling what the driver is out of the gate. Seeing one, two, three, four gears, getting the drive out here. But look, I guarantee you there'll be a touch of hesitation. To be fair, we all have big spotters. Look at Taylor James entering real early. Andrew Redwood doing a nice job out front, throwing that. Wow! FDRX7 into backwards into that corner. Obviously, there's a little bit of uh, slip, slipperiness there, but he did so well to catch it. And look at Taylor the James jumping at the up. end with Taylor James. Woo! Uh, well, ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for these two people out there putting on a show the first half of the battle in the top 16. Left, right, left, right. They're trying to get those front wheels nice and hot, especially if, like Bruce said, there is a bit of a greasy spot where they come off the sweeper and switch into the second clip. They want those fronts and rears to be grabbing all the grip they can. Hear them out of the gate. Taylor James sending it full hard into this first corner. Nice and wide. Look at the grip here. Look at Andrew oh, sucking here up comes on the red side. Woo! Red Hot almost down. run out. Yeah, good driving by both of these guys, obviously, into that little area where it's a little bit greasy, but good driving by both drivers. Taylor James opening the door for Andrew to come up on the inside. Now, Andrew sort of hindered himself, came up a little bit tight. So quick. Pretty cool to see both those guys just showing you how they can do anything uh, for that. But let's go up to the judges here. One, two, three. Taylor James gets the win. All right, see it. Bay Park it goes. The Ford Mustang RTR Spec 5D, the two times New Zealand Drift King. Vanger Dan Woolhouse going up against Cody Pullenbury in the CK Earthworks S15. It's 2J versus Monster, Roush Yates VH. Yeah, let's see how this battle heads out with Vanger Dan leading Luna. Putting all that Ford power down to the throttle as he throws it in here on the sweeper. Nice wide line there, opening the door up for Cody Pullenbury who comes up. Wow! Right on the inside there. Oh, and Fanger still held that back. Rolling it through for the uh, last section of the section there. But wow, there was a lot of angle on there. And Cody Pullenberry come through at a rate of knots. We, we want to watch the uh, Fangers lead. So uh, here we go, the Repco replay here. Let's see how it unfolds. So Cody throws it in big time here. Fangers holding it up, grabs the handbrake, gets off throttle, bam. Cody makes contact right there. Look at the wheel. Look at it bent. 
He's got a good bit of contact there. So as he had that in the line, he would have had a whole heap more speed than Fanger running that wider line. Fanger, there is a detail zone. So as you come off the sweeper and go to transition to the there other side. So Fanger's lifting a wheel. He's still on throttle because that car's pitched up. Cody's just come in at a rate of knots, clip the back of Fanger's car before he rotates uh, to get to that outer clip. But yeah, that's a good bit of contact on... Uh, on Fanger Dan's car, no doubt he will be checking that, or is he lined up because he's like, nah, I'm just going to send it, she'll be right. We've got the next battle, Geordie Cole versus Gargan Can. Let's well, see what this big fella can do. And this is top 16 action here at Pukagoe Park. On the left-hand side of the tree is the Coastal Spar and Pool FCRX7 of Geordie Cole. He's got Gargan Kang chucking up underneath the R32 and flying. What a good battle here. Now, Geordie Cole is sometimes unpredictable what he's going to do. And look at him out there. Full send. Gargan's doing very well to try and sit behind him in the smoke, but got lost in the smoke and got out of it. Had a correction in a straight line on that one, but what a lead by Geordie Cole there. This should be a good battle here with Gargan out front now. So you go through the chicane, Geordie should be able to now sit with him here. Full throttle down there with that RB. That B8 in behind. Nice wide line there by Gargan. Opening the door up for Geordie Cole. Good run here so far for Gargan. Transferring the car to that outer zone. Up over that ripple strip. Nice lead run here by Gargan on the throttle. Geordie there falling back a little bit but doing a pretty clean line there in the chase run and that was not a bad run there ladies and gentlemen by both of these guys out there. Hopefully the judges have got a decision as these two drivers come in here. It's going to be Geordie Cole, will it be Gargan Kang? It's down to the judges' decision. One, two, three strikes. Geordie Cole takes the win. Yeah, for sure. That car is definitely well built by Matt from Pariah Customs. He does an excellent job out here. But ladies and gentlemen, let's see this next battle as they send it down the front straight here at Pukakaui. Adam Davies throwing it in there. Look at Jesse Rock on the door. I love how he is. Huge commitment here as he transitions the car back, sitting up there on Adam, throwing a nice line by Adam, a little bit of mistake there by Jesse, getting a little bit too keen, switching a little bit early, but a nice lean uh, lead run there by Adam Davies. Well, let's hope they don't need to find a 10 millimeter socket because that will not be in the pit bay. But and look, what is it? Get! Woo! Look at Jesse Greenslade. I'm not here to muck around. He's gonna send it in there massively now. Adam Davies, will, oh, what was he doing? He was sleeping or stalled or something. Now this might get done for inactive chase, I am not sure, but Jesse doing all that he needs to, running out to that outer zone, a good clean run. Wow, Jesse just wow. sent that from the box. Ready boy, I'm off. What have they decided? Ooh, we've got one says OMT, one says Jesse Greenslade, the other one yeah. says OMT. Woo, let's and do it again. <laughs> I know this, that guy in that black car. He's going to go pretty hard right now. And uh, we know Adam Davies will be too. This is going to be a good battle here for these two lads. Looks like he's running zero off centre. Anyway, let's see what they do. So, of course, Adam got gap last time. And I'm sure Jesse's going to be right on the tail. They're side by side as they come through to enter here at Pukekohe Park. Look at Jesse on the throw of Adam Davies on that sweeper. Oh, he grabs the handbrake. A little bit of hesitation there. He's got a lot of grip in that S15, but Adam doing what he should, giving him the room. Was there a touch of contact? Oh no, Jesse's had a mistake in behind. Car gripped up. What a battle that was for the first part of that. Wow, Jesse. Uh, so I'd say on this, Adam will not be sleeping because watch this rocket ship take off as the 30B tries to keep up with it. RB32, Captain NZ Girls, S15, Jesse trying it out nice and wide, a good lead run as he should do. Now Adam just needs to hold it together and sit in behind. Jesse doing a good lead run, good lead run, opening the door, tucking down well, and Adam doing very well himself, doing all he needed to behind that NZ Girls S15. 
Well, let's see what Mark O'Hara, Joel Counter, and Chris Howard say. One, two, three, it's unanimous. Adam Davies goes through, takes the win over Jesse Greenslade. Michael Thorley in the Vertex NZ GT Radials 180 going up against Troy Jenkins in the North Shore Toyota Parts Carters GT86. It's 2J versus RB. It's in the hands of Wooly, our launch controller, as there's the standard drag race down the front straight here book at Cohen Park smashing the gears as Michael Thorley leads out for the first time and that's how Thorley throws it in there quite nicely sort of opening the door up for Troy but wow pushing really wide trying to get back to the other side of the track he's now going to wash out oh and he's going off track there giving it to Troy in the trace Troy just needs to hold it together he will be absolutely stoked with that and Thorley will be absolutely gutted with that one uh, as you could see he come around he had a nice wide line so because he's returned to the pits I don't think there's any choice not to take the five minute call which has obviously just been decided as well yeah a bit of an issue there underlying issue that we can't quite see but uh, hopefully yes those guys will get it sorted so Thorley can get out there for the second part of that battle but it looks like now we've got Bruce out there um, First round win in Wellington a couple of seasons ago. Yeah. Hasn't really looked back since then, has he? Yeah, yeah. You start to get, as I say, you get you get comfortable with the cars, you know, you're looking for four-time champion Gaz Water. He's been driving that same S14 for a long, long time. And here the boys go. Been sending it in nice and fast into this awesome sweeper. And Bruce following in behind, sucking up on the inside a little bit there, pushing a little a wee bit wide, been doing what he needs to, throwing a lot of angle, opening the door for Bruce to suck up on the inside there, getting out to that outer zone and dropping the nose down into that panhead final clip. And that was a good lead run there by Ben Jenkins. When you look at your favourite track, you've done so many. Mm -hmm. What would it be? I really like Taupo. Taupo is a very nice, flowing, smooth track, especially when they do the internal uh, internal track. Did you see that Tony Quinn's made an offer? He's got two tracks, why not have three? Oh, that'd be awesome. He will develop that facility massive. But let's jump back to this battle here with Bruce Tannock leading out. Ben Jenkins throws it in here. Benny Boy, oh no! will be gutted about that, the car gripped up massively for him, trying to grab the handbrake, now he's just oh, on catch off. up, wheel off over the line, Bruce Tanner just doing what he needs to in the lead run there, which is nice, smooth and uh, technical there by Bruce. Alright, Bruce Tanner, one, two, oh there goes the third, he gets the three. Well, let's, uh, let's see what the next battle is, it's the harder racing R35 GTR. Of course, Versus Darren the, Kelly. Yeah, and Scotty Dinsdale, new in the uh, pro sport, uh, pro championship this year. Certainly is with that 2JZ power plant. The real estate by Paulie Dinsdale, Nissan S13, the Team 13 campaigner. Out of Whangarei as well. Scotty D versus Darren Kelly. Again, special mention to our 250 guests from Starship Hospital here because of the team from Heart of Racing. Darren Kelly, he's your man to watch. Let's see what Darren Kelly can do as he leads out the first half of the race, <laughs> of the battle. Yeah, and of course, course, Scotty D didn't want to get left behind, yeah. so what has he done? He's taken off and look, he's hopefully going to stick with Darren, but Darren's come past him at a rate of knots, throwing it in nice and wide there. Scotty D, yeah, getting left behind a little bit, kind of uh, didn't work in his favour, but look, he's closing the door here, Darren doing what he should. Oh, whoa, Scotty D threw a lot of angle there, and it's really caught him out, but now he's been able to hold that and get it back through. It's, it's phenomenal. because he's Scotty D. That is uh, a good, good <laughs> lead run there by Darren, and yeah, a bit of a mistake there by Scotty D as he rotated off the sweeper. The land of the long white cloud. Yeah, what do you call a sheep cloud. with no legs? A cloud. Let's go back to drifting action. <laughs> that will in D1NZ. It's Darren Kelly's turn to chase down Scotty Denzel. Scotty certainly trying to make a quick work of that chicane because he needs to get up on the gas. Yeah, look at Darren sitting up there right behind him as he does need to. Throwing it in there nicely. Darren with a shallow line there. Scotty D just throwing some big angle there. Darren hopefully not going to close himself out, just like what the judges were talking about before. Just doing what he needs to. Sitting behind Scotty D, who's doing a good lead run. Opening the door for Darren to dive up on the inside there. Ladies and gentlemen, that there was a good run from both drivers. Well, one 
two, three. Darren Kelly, unanimous, takes the win. He'll be happy. As we go to our next battle of the day, Michael Thorley in the Vertex NZ GT Radials 180 going up against the Carters. North Shore Toyota Parts GT86. Is Thorley's car going to be okay? We know he's had problems, but he's just come out of a five minute call, and as they kick it into life, dying on the angle. Yeah, for sure. Troy doing what he needs to, just throwing the uh, throwing the car sideways. A little bit of a mid-track. Oh, Thorley's had the same issue go off again. He snapped back on that rotation. Obviously a driveline issue, but stoked for Troy as he hopefully will get the win on this one. A good clean run from the uh, old boy there. But who's it going to be? Michael Thorley, Troy Jenkins. One, two, three. Troy Jenkins goes through. As we fly down towards the start line, the smoke show is rising and it's going to be a show as we get ready to send the Ford Mustang RTR Spec 5D, the Century Batteries two times champion, Fanger Dan Woolhouse in lead position. We've got Taylor James, the Ford Rotary, NDT Developments, 2JZ powered, 180, and they're side by side down the front straight into the sweeper for the first time. Fanger Woo! going wide. Look at Fanger opening the door up for Taylor James. Taylor taking the opportunity to jump in there. A little bit of hesitation there, falling back, but hopefully he can close the door now as Fanger opens it up oh. for him. Wow, a little mistake there by Fanger. Did you see what that happened there with the car? That was a strong chase run by Taylor James. <laughs> that was cool. Yeah, well, this here will be a uh, good flip around. As we know, Taylor has been sending it in there pretty hard, and so will Fanger. So no doubt there will be no get given as they send it in here to Pukakoe. For the second half of this battle, Taylor James throwing it in with a big angle. Fanger doing what he needs to, sitting back a little bit, tucking up on the inside, rotating back out wide. Wow, Fanger was out wide on the grass. He's had a little mistake, but look at him trying to claw back in. Taylor James throws it into that inner club. <laughs> wow, Fanger Dan will not be happy. One, maybe two wheels off as they came through to, for the switch into the left-hander. And uh, let's see what the judges come back. Wow, Taylor James gets the win. But it is time for our next battle of the day. It is the Coastal Spa and Pool Services. To, um, it's the Twin Turbo 1UZ Toyota versus the Mimico Napa Auto Parts 180 of Adam Davies. Looking nice, both of these guys. Now, uh... Adam Spotter will be telling him, look, you've just got to go hard. You don't know what Jordy Cole's going to do, but he is going to come in there and fire it into that. Why wow, Adam sitting out real wide, right in that smoke screen. Jordy Cole running that little shallow line. Adam doing real well, got a little bit lost in the smoke, having to run up over the ripple strip there to try and get that line through there. Jordy Cole doing what he needed to, running a little bit of a shallower line there. And uh, that one mistake is going to send a massive advantage in the favour of Jordy Cole. Slams the face down, gets ready for action. And it's down the front straight here, look at going back, round five in the Valvoline D1NZ. And it's the Mimico Nippa Auto Parts 180, right at using as much of the track as he can. And Davies leading out Jordy Cole. Yeah, doing a good lead run here for opening the door for Geordie Cole to come up on the inside and Geordie's doing exactly that, look at him, did he get, oh no, he's got lost in the smoke, no way, he is, oh no, he'll be gutted just giving that away, just run a little bit wide there and got lost in the smoke. So now we've oh. got to talk about this one here, that one there is the theory, that's got to be that's a, zero. a zero. Yeah. But still be pretty happy. He will uh, come away with a smile, a smile surely on his face after well, this. Let's see what Marco Hara, Joel Counter, and Chris Howard say. The judges of the D1NZ. One person says Adam Davies. Two is enough for Adam Davies. There is an OMT in there, but two to one. Adam Davies goes through. Liam Burke, we certainly know that he is always keen to take victory. But Troy Jenkins, he's got a point to prove. Can he get himself through into the semi-finals of round five of the Valvoline D1NZ? We're about to find out as the thumbs go up and they are released. Down the front straight we go, put it going far, putting it on round five of the Valvoline D1NZ. Yeah, Liam Burke doing a nice wide entry there for Troy to suck up on the inside. Troy doing very well, look at him. Just about got caught in the smoke, did well to hold that back together. 
fallen back a little bit with hesitating on the handbrake, but still pulling it through. Liam doing what he needs to, and that is a good, clean lead run for him. But whoo, oh, wow. that would have been. is so good in the lead. The animal Liam Burke's going to have to get was 2J versus 2J. It's Carter's versus, wow, the animal. He needs a title sponsor. Pay him some money, you can get your name on the side of that car for Bay Park. Let's see what Liam Burke can do in the chase position as they head back down the front straight here. Troy Jenkins smashing through the gears. Getting ready, looks over his shoulder, but into the drift we go. Yeah, Troy doing exactly what he does every time. Liam Burke is absolutely blind through there, came through the smoke, dropped a little wheel there on the inside. Troy doing what he needs to, sort of opening the door for Liam Burke. A little bit of a bobble oh. there. Troy just needing to hold it, send it out for the end of the run, and what a good wow. battle by both of these boys. Liam, Lee, Burke. Liam Burke going through and getting that proximity back, but I think that he's found a few mistakes to get himself there. Let's look at the back end of this car, because I think we've seen a couple of wheels off. Look how wide he is there. Like He would have seen absolutely nothing there. He's come on the inside there, look dropped at that. the wheel. Wheels. One wheel. Wow. Troy just doing what he needed so to. We've seen and then this one here, inside, across there, oh, that's, I think, no, Ripple that Strips no, is in, eh? Yeah, Ripple Strips in. So we've got two wheels off, essentially. We've got the front wheel now, Woo! and then we see the back wheel on the overhead shot. Yeah, Troy holding the, the handbrake turbo. right there. Huge handbrake there as he rotates angle. But getting out wide, just doing what he needs to, Troy. He does miss that in a clip there, but nothing too major. Ten this years. will be very interesting to see, ladies and gentlemen. What are the judges going to call? All right, it's going to be Liam Burke, Troy Jenkins. Are we seeing OMT? Well, hopefully the judges after this, what the call is, we uh, get a little bit of insight of how they made that call. Come down to mistakes. Wow, so Liam Burke, even though he put two wheels off, goes through there. Troy Jenkins obviously caused enough. What? Yeah. Well, let's see what's going to happen here as we see a little bit of perspiration coming down. It's a harder racing. R35 GTR, Darren Kelly, a two-times champion versus Mr. 2017, the Arcades Radials, Mag and Turbo S13, Bruce Tannock in the chase position. Oh, look, Bruce has just smoked the tyres off the line, just got absolutely gapped by Darren. Darren doing what he's been doing all day, running that nice wide line, tucking the car up. Bruce just playing catch up now. There was massive wheel spin off that line. Big mistake by Bruce there and just handing it to, uh, handing it to Darren. Hold fire, New Zealand. Hold fire. We want to see these top eight and top four battles go under dry conditions. Here we go. Bruce Tannock leading out Darren Kelly in the second part of this battle in the top eight. Bruce throwing it in. Damn, making contact. No, don't wow. scratch his car. No, no. He's oh. gone into the wall. That is contact right there from Darren Kelly. Wow, this, oh no. Oh, no. This is going to be a bit of controversy right now. I can see it That's 100 That's a $5,000 headline. <laughs> <laughs> the biggest thing is these guys will be okay. Obviously, yeah, all the cars are car, safe. He was hit by Darren. He was. Oh, oh no. That looks like a, one of the characters of Cars. <laughs> Let's go back for the replay here, but hey, I have to say, Bruce has been doing the same line all day. Beautiful he looking S13, in. not oh, beautiful looking no. S13. Oh. He will be not happy in there, Darren tagging him. Now that should have come down to the spotter, not saying <laughs> anyone spotters are bad, but what happened here? Bruce has been doing it all day. Gets off throttle, on entry, and then grabs a handbrake. Now Darren's been coming in just too fast, made contact there straight away, hit Bruce, put him into a spin, and Bruce nowhere to go. Oh gosh, Bruce. Hits the front there into the wall, absolutely gutted for these guys. There goes Darren. That's a $5,000 headlight just there. Darren will be gutted. Look at that contact. Bang. Well, I got, I got Darren with me, so we'll get Darren's read on the, on the incident, shall we? What's your read? Um, yeah, I think we were just coming in um, quite a bit slower, but um, I knew, like Bruce even told me himself, he was coming in a bit slower, and um, yeah, after the initiation, it just felt like he slowed up dramatically, so I don't know if that was a handbrake drag or something, but I thought I gave him like plenty of room, and I was even on the handbrake as we, as we connected, so um, I don't know, I'd have to see, see a video, but I thought... How, how do you think the judges will view this? 
I don't know. It's um, it's a hard one. I need to sort of see the video and, and see what um, what it looked like. But from my point of view, it seemed like um, I gave him plenty of space and um, definitely felt we were coming in a lot slower. I was down a gear, anticipating the fact that I'm going to have to um, slow up and try to just use um, you know like a bit less car speed um, and just keep the car in power band. Um, but yeah, I, I'm not sure. You okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm good. This is going to be a bit risky for the boys here. We've had a little bit of rain. Hopefully their spotters have told them, easy, easy into this, feel well, it out. Look at it, it is greasy right well, now. It's going to be the Mimico Napa Auto Pass. It'd be rotary power 180 of Adam Davies. It's 180 versus 180. Taylor James, the man who ran yeah. second last year. Let's see what he can oh, do. Oh, no. Woohoo. <laughs> wow. This yeah. is, oh, wow we. That is keen. Oh, Adam, you keen man. Look at him. There, yeah, stalls it up, back into it. The ball. <laughs> this is ice skating at its best, ladies and gentlemen. Like, oh what was Adam thinking coming in there fast? Ice skating, Holy it was definitely moly. Tonya Harding skating. It's an interesting day today here at Pukekohe Park. Well, let's go back to the Battle of the 180s. The 2J versus the 13B. It's Taylor James' turn this time to lead out Adam Davies. And it's a pretty even run as they head into Taylor a little bit slower yeah, because of the weather. Definitely a little bit slower. Way more hesitant by Taylor James, which is good. Good from him, smarter. He's and look wide. at it. He's wide, a little bit of a bump. He's totally oh, no, over and Adam's going back. <laughs> no, he somehow out Just, it. Oh, this sucks. <laughs> This sucks with these guys. I know it's so hard out there with this wet conditions. Don't forget, no the, good. Both of these drivers here are essentially going to podium, aren't they? Oh, yeah, they will, mate. But this is first off. and third. It just comes down to the judge. Oh, yeah, mate. That that was a tough one there. Obviously, uh, Adam over rotating on the chase there. That'll probably be a uh, zero on that one. Well, that should be hit enough for Taylor James to go through. But of course, if it does, we're at the moment looking at uh, Liam Burke versus Taylor well, James. Well, let's look final. here. Oh, no, Taylor still had angle on that. He did really well. I thought he had to reinitiate on that one. But yeah, Adam just coming around a little bit too far. Let's go to the judges here on this call. Poor guys out there having a battle in this uh, treacherous conditions when it gets all skatey out there. But let's go down to Stephen MacGyver. All righty. Mr. James keeps her rolling, eh? Now you have a crack at the round win. Yeah, oh no, that was one of the scariest things I've ever done. I entered behind Adam and yeah, just drifted out towards the wall. Um, I honestly thought we were gone. I went back to third and um, just tried to stay on it, but real shaky, but what else can we do? I literally couldn't go much faster without going off, so it's just, yeah, be safe and try and keep it in the line. Well, it's now uh, drying up, okay, a little bit, so get ready for that top battle. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, so as you go, into the first inside clip it's actually a bit dry there but then it's real wet after it so yeah it's quite hard but yeah pretty cool to have a Waffridge car in the pro field so be good for some people at home watching. All right mate well here's the crazy thing uh, by default Adam Daisy Davies finishes on the podium in third position because of what's been going on today uh, protest not upheld by the judges on Darren Kelly so you could pick up third position mate. Oh by default okay. Yeah yeah mate. <laughs> Mate, take it! I'll take that, yeah, it's alright, man. That was, that was shocking out there, to be honest. Full credit to Ta for Tay to hold him together in his lead run. Man, it was so slippery, I just had no drive at all. It just <laughs> I actually thought I was going in the wall, to be honest, but you know, I managed to save it, and I've still got a car in one piece, so that's, that's alright. Yeah, well, okay, just to just remind you, you get to do the burnout before the podium today, okay? Yeah. So you can have some fun before the, but not now, because we've still got the top, the battle for the uh, top spot to go, right? Yeah, all good, thank you. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, alright, so there you go. Just confirmation, Adam Davies finishes on the podium third by default. Protest by Darren Kelly on that last one, not upheld, and the judges have stuck with their decision. Bruce Tannock will finish in fourth position. What a wild old day. Once again, sun's out and it's stopped raining, but we've got that battle for the round win coming up. Liam Burke, the higher qualifier today, will lead out the first time. He gets to go through and taste the slippery track conditions for the first time. So a chase position in the NDT developments, foreign rotaries, Roundwood New Zealand 2JZ powered 180SX. It's Taylor James with the two on the door, and he will be going up against 
your current New Zealand Drift King, the animal, Liam Burke in the 2JZ powered Nissan S13. It's 2JZ versus 2JZ. Willie the Launchmaster getting the okay for, but from both of these drivers as they head down to the slippery conditions of the front straight of Pukekohe Park. Round five of the Valvoline D1NZ. We get ready to send them. It gets goes down to Willie. He looks for the okay to send them. Three, two, one. Forget the rest. We've got the best. Valvoline D1NZ National Drifting Championship. Round number five. Pocket Kowie. It's final time. Look at Liam Burke sending it in massively. And look at it. It's now dried up on the sweeper. Such treacherous conditions. Taylor James knew it was slippery. Look at the gap. He, he let Liam get away. The track has dried out so quickly through there. And look, Liam Burke has just taken it with everything that he can, not knowing what the track was like, and just sent it. Well, this is the final between two great drivers, the current one and two ends here. We go to the Repco replay to look at these cars going down the front straight into the sweeper again, the first time of the final. Yeah, a few bobbles there by both drivers, but Liam Burke still holding the wide line. Obviously, it kind of hindered Taylor then because he knew the track conditions before and they've changed again where Liam didn't know what they were and just came in and, and, and flicked it in and he managed to well, hold it. There has been constant change today. It's been four seasons in one day, much like it was yesterday, and it's made it harder and harder as the day's gone on. Liam Burke having to do a great job up the front to hold on to it and what could have been any type of conditions he faced. Oh, definitely, Steve. Uh, obviously, look how quick the track has dried out. Within five, ten minutes, uh, we've got a dry line now. And uh, obviously, yeah, Taylor will think, oh, well, oh, I better flick into this one as hard as I can and uh, see if, can, if Liam can keep up and force a mistake. Well, we are getting ready for hopefully what will be the second half and the only half of the uh, battle to go. I'm looking forward to, I've got my fingers crossed that we don't see an OMT in this one. If we do, though, we'll just go again. Of course, sudden death OMTs if we do this year. I think that's a great. And uh, look, you can see the two cars lined up again, ready to go. Yeah, Liam Burke will be feeling good after that first run. Taylor will know he'd need to push hard to try and force a mistake. He did get left behind and there, had a little bit of a bobble behind uh, Liam leading. But here we go, the second part of this final. Let's send it. Well, down the front straight, and they are bumper to bumper as they go through. And here comes Taylor James. Oh, a slight bobble. Liam Burke really tucked up in the pocket. Yeah, a bit of a messy entry again. Both cars really gripping up there, but look at Liam diving on the inside there of Taylor James's car. Look at the grip that thing has. He's right up on that rear quarter, putting a show on right in the smoke screen. Good chase there by Liam Burke, and a nice clean lead run uh, by Taylor James in that last section. Well, of course, we saw this car here that sits in the lead position right now come second yesterday in Pro Sport with David Hunter. It's not either of their cars. Taylor James is not your car either. Brian from NDT Developments really throwing it down, letting a couple of great guys drive his car to help him get through and look at where it's sitting. It's, it's road registered. I know, I know. What a, uh, what a car that has been. It's gone through the uh, hills this weekend getting into both finals in the pro sport and the pro here where Taylor James pilots it uh, in the final run here. Liam Burke doing very well there in the chase run. We're all happy. Have we got a result? I have to ask the question to you guys. Do we have a result yet for this round win of round five of the Valvoline D1NZ Drifting Championship? I can't see it. Someone's going to tell me in my ear. Let's wait. Well, down to the judge's decision. Mark O'Hara says Liam Burke, OMT for one driver. What's Chris Howard going to say? Liam Burke takes the win. Liam Burke, congr congratulations, buddy. So that goes to you. That's the chequered flag. I've only got one request of you and uh, Adam, wherever it is. Go do some skids before the podium, all right? Get out of here and put on a more of a show. And there is eight points between the top three in the championship right now. Eight points. But this is the man, put your hands together, Book at Gully Park, Australasia, of course, everyone in Foxtel and KO, and joining us here by Sky Sports here in Aotearoa, New Zealand. After this, we'll be going straight into the 
prize giving, but let's have a look at the championship points ladder as it sits. So in 8th position, Bruce Tannock on 254 points, Adam Davies moving to 276 in 7th position. Taylor James moves up into 6th place with 284 points. Ben Jenkins, 298 points for 5th place. Fangadan Woolhouse, 364 points in 4th place. Andrew Redwood goes to 3rd, 378 with 3rd place. And Darren Kelly moves up into 2nd, 384 points for 2nd. But Liam Burke, 386 points. He leads going in to round number 6, the grand finale at Bay Park. Let's see you after the break. It is time for the trophy presentation of round five of the Valvoline D1NZ Championship brought to you by Repco. What a day, folks. How good has that been, hey? It has been an absolutely stunning day. So in fourth place, Bruce Tannock. And now onto the podium in third place. Please welcome Adam Davies. Trophies presented by two-time D1NZ champion Cole Armstrong, suitably attired today for the weather. And in second place, Taylor James! <laughs> and the winner of round five of the Valvoline D1NZ Championship, brought to you by Repco, and your defending Drift King. Please welcome the animal, Liam Burke! There, folks, is your podium for round five of the Valvoline D1NZ Drifting Championship. Time to open up that champagne, boys, and spray some bubbles. So we are one run away from crowning a new Drift King, which is in Bay Park in a couple of weeks. Cole Armstrong, when, when you take a look at this this run, this was, I think this is one of the craziest rounds we've seen. Oh, without a doubt, the rain came in right at the pointy end of the battles, mixed things up big time. We've had a whole reverse now of a championship leader. It's a big thing at the final round. Yeah, now, I mean, this 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 has been a game change because we'll confirm a little bit later on there's going to be a change at the top of the order. Andrew Redwood, the, the leader coming to this round, not a great day today, but, uh, you know, anything can happen now. Oh, definitely. The final round, Mount Monganui, the boys will be putting everything on the line. It's, go it's going to be a good show. The one thing we've seen already in this, this Valvoline D1NZ Championship, borrowing a car doesn't seem to make much of a difference as we've seen today. Oh, definitely not. Like the, This shows the talent of the drivers. You know, they can jump in an unknown car and get to the top spot here. Hats off to Taylor James and obviously David Hunter into the Pro Sports Series, uh, driving really well. <laughs> that, that little car's been very quick, so we'll go and have a quick chat to uh, Adam Davies. Says, you come with me, Cole, because you're allowed to chat as well, because you do chat. Adam, Adam, let's uh, let's have a quick chat about 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 your day today and where you hit here. He got he gets excited about Puka Don't worry about that. Um, this was this is a crazy day for you. Oh yeah, I, I was having a bit of dramas this morning with um, with my other car, and and luckily I brought the old trusty bot along. I've I've actually dubbed my new car Karen because it's always always giving me hell. So um, yeah, I jumped in the old car and I just just it's like my favourite shoe, you know. Basically, just jump in and, and away I go. I was putting in some good lines all day and. Just got a little bit lucked out by the weather for the um, top four battle and I must have been damn close hitting the wall, so yeah, it was all in all a good day. Yeah, I have to ask the question, did no one tell you it had rained? Because you come in at 156 kilometres in the rain. Oh, I was slower than I was doing all day. So. <laughs> cool. Well driven, mate. Look, looking forward to Bay Park? Yeah, yeah, it's good. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Local round, so we're good to hopefully put the Napa and Mimico 186 back on the podium again. All right, well, let's talk to one man that, well, he borrowed a car. We'll flip over this side. Colin, you can see on that side. I'll stand this side. I mean, you won Bay Park last year. Let's not talk about that for a moment. You've had hell luck with your own car this year. How hard has it been to adjust a new car and then suddenly your podium? Yeah, definitely. It's um, 
yeah, it's hard going into something you don't really know, but um, the way Brian's got this car set up, real easy to drive, nice, comfy, has all the right gear in it, so yeah, half my job's already done really. What are you, you going to do for the final round? Obviously it's only two weeks away, I know what's sort of going on with the car, so what, what's in the bag for you? Yeah, oh, at this stage we don't know, um, we, uh, my new motor's cracked the block we think on Friday, so Brian gave us this and it got us out there, so yeah, unsure what we do yet, but yeah, we'll be there. You know, you started the day when I spoke to you, you looked a bit brow beaten, but you must be pretty good right now. Yeah, it's sort of hard, you know, all my sponsors and people that helped me out, I couldn't have that car here with their names on it because it was such a last minute decision sort of thing. But yeah, big ups to all of them. And again, Brian from NDT, Fawn Raider, Ellen and Putty, um, MSC Turbos, um, Phoenix Radiators, Adrian and the team, um, just everyone else that helps me out. It's massive and I can't ap I appreciate it so much. Thanks. Mate, we love the entertainment. Well done. We'll see you at Bay Park. Well, defending Drift King right here. Liam, defending Drift King and now points leader. Uh, a, bi a big weekend for you, buddy. And we had a funny feeling. You looked right in the re when you were warming up today early. about It was about 11 o'clock this morning. You looked like you are on form. Did you feel it? Yeah, um, started feeling pretty good this morning. Um, wasn't earlier on, but um, I just want to say a massive hats off to Taylor. He's borrowed that car two or three events, and he is pedaling it like a champion. And it also helps fuel the fire with a bit of the um, RB versus Jay Z debate that's going on. So, <laughs> thank you, Taylor. Legend. I know Cole's a bit, but no, nah, massive thank you to all everyone on the car. You, you guys are all legends. You all do massive help up to me. And um, we actually tried some new tyres this weekend. Um, Trice and oh, unreal, <laughs> crazy. Awesome, so you won't have to change too much for the final round. Obviously you're at the pointy end. You'll be going pretty hard, no doubt. Yeah, uh, a couple of small changes to the car, but oh yeah, give it a go. Bay Park's always been testing for me and yeah, and catching up to the drivers, but it, it should be working out. I just hope to get some door-to-door -door battles. Well, door-to-door, -door, you go into the final round as the points there, so no pressure whatsoever. Bit of concrete around in Bay Park too, but we can't wait. You can get your tickets, don't forget about that. Bay Park not too far away at the end of the month, but it is going down to the wire. The 2021 Valvoline D1NZ Drifting Championship brought to you by Repco is on like Donkey Kong. We will see you at Bay Park in a couple of weeks but this run won by this man the animal Liam Burke we'll see you at Bay Park Congratulations, but so that...